Greetings family, this is Bomani Taimba and welcome to our Africa Tour conference call and today's date is December 10th, 2023 and we're here to talk about all of our incredible tour information on our website africaforafricans.org as we're celebrating our 17 years of our journey of a lifetime from 2006 to 2023 and that's just the years on the Africa for the Africans and two years before that traveling to different parts of Africa and building our experience. So um, you're looking at about 20 years of just us moving around different parts of Africa, documenting our journey, and just looking to inspire more people to just uh, enjoy their retirement, enjoy their getaway, and uh, basically uh, enjoy itineraries that are created for us as a people and just completely relevant to us as a people. So Almost all the tours that we have are basically roots and culture tour that talks about the history and the culture of different countries and get us uh, connected to where we can enjoy a great experience uh, with our peers, uh, great dining, lodging, and just a uh, great uh, sequence of uh, itinerary. And as all itineraries are different, uh, but uh, the goal is to create itineraries where they are well balanced and create the greatest logistic flow from flights to movements to where you know, you're moving around with peace and then ultimately, to get everything done for you to where you just join the journey, uh, enjoy it, and then go with the flow. Uh, so I'm always telling everyone, if you just literally didn't read anything, um, we're not going to give you a hard time. But once you get to the country, just go with the flow and enjoy the itinerary that we have set up. And just, um, just uh, let us uh, lead you on this uh, experience. Uh, it's something that um, I've done so often, uh, consistently, just every few months for almost two decades. Uh, we're in and out of Africa as uh, Impo uh, impossible or as incredible as people may uh, see it. Uh, it's been um, you know, my life experience. And before that, US military traveling, working for the airlines travel. So you talk about 30 uh, years of this, you know, that experience and that experience comes in when, you know, when people are not new to what we're doing and uh, they just can flow with it based on that itinerary and based on this the yeah, presentation, whether it's uh, this presentation that talks about other countries or when we do private conference calls, specifically talking about the countries that we travel to. Um, usually some of them are a few months ahead and then we usually have uh, one or two last ones uh, a month before we travel and then go over any finalized itinerary and finalized details. So on this call, it's um, too much uh, tours to go over. So we're going to generalize a lot of information. And the most important thing that we're gonna always uh, recommend is that uh, you just click on our website, africaforafricans.org, and then just basically look for the information that you're looking for. Uh, so for most people, what you're looking for is a country that you're traveling to. So everything, uh, all the countries, all the schedules that we have is right there on the main menu and then the uh, front page of the uh, website. So once you get to the website, I got some nice music. You can pause it or you can enjoy the music or you can mute uh, your audio. Uh, beyond that, I have a slideshow representing this different uh, tour photos, group photos, individual photos over 17 years. So there's just random photos. And I'm always telling everyone, if you just want to see more in detail photos, I've religiously just created a Facebook uh, uh, group uh, galleries uh, for every tour that we have done. Some tours have multiple, some have one or two. And this shows highlight from us at the beginning of the tour all the way throughout the journey. And you'll see how things look, how people are moving in. And I just give you this as best as an idea along with the videos as you can get if you've never been to the country. So this is just our way of connecting you and introducing you to Africa. And it's just a mix of this uh, many different things. And as we scroll down, uh, uh, we start off the introduction was uh, to join us on a journey of a lifetime to the motherland to experience a vibrant Africa uh, with a mix of roots, culture, paradise, nightlife, shopping, networking, business and investment opportunities. Uh, so some countries we more focus on business, but all of them are just general tour itineraries. Uh, Ghana and the Liberia journey uh, looking to push more business and investments and repatriation than anything else, uh, but uh, you're not limited to that. So. When we talk about different itineraries, uh, some people may like uh, certain things on itinerary. Like if you're a big shopper, you love the shopping part, but also we have museums and we have historical places that we go to. So I'm not saying that uh, everyone should just embrace everything 100%, uh, but at the same time too, um, you know, example, like while, you, while some people are enjoying their shopping, some people may just relax, relax on the bus. 
And then some people, when they go to certain cultural sites, they may just be well in tune to it. And if you're not feeling it, you know, you can just chill on the bus or I would just say, come out. You may learn something. Uh, you may get connected with some things, but these schedules are built to give an incredible experience. And most of these are schedules I've done over many times. So as time go along, your goal is to perfect schedules and make sure that we have the right people in the country that can deliver and accommodate us to the highest level. And in the past, for those who couldn't deliver and things like that, you know, you have to just move forward and create better staff and better crew. So everything that you're looking at on the schedule has been updated as best as possible. And the people that's getting ready to set to work with us, I'm getting more of them in place and more excited to just be ready for us. Uh, so that's how uh, we create this incredible experience called a journey of a lifetime. Uh, so when you, once you're right here, uh, you'll literally just see the links to all of the uh, active uh, tour packages with the full price, which includes flight. Uh, but to get the full details, you have to click on it. Definitely recommend reading through the overview, which is going to give you the prices, uh, what's included, what's not included, and uh, list of all of the, the tour sites that we're going to go to and then a list of the uh, hotels so you can be clear about what you're getting into. And then uh, from there, the day-to-day uh, -day itinerary just give you a full day-to-day -day flow from flight schedules to how we're moving around the country. And when we create these schedules, we put the times as best as we can. So uh, when we're there in the country, uh, we're going to give you the most updated time and things like that. And the best thing we're always saying on the average day uh, is usually just to be ready by 8.30. And then uh, we look to push out by 9 o'clock once uh, the bus and everything else is in place. And just tell everybody just to cool, enjoy themselves. Uh, wait there in the lobby or the breakfast area and we get you out and the goal is usually get back uh, around five o'clock and all schedules don't work that uh, simple uh, sometimes you have to leave out a little earlier and we get back a little bit later uh, but we just in, encourage everyone to get on the bus every day and then just enjoy the flow of that itinerary that you paid for and that was designed to give you a great experience and I'm always telling people who go to France and other countries uh, England or so on um, and you have this popular hype about um, the, the Arab nations nowadays because where you go in there, it's all fancy and modern day infrastructure and glasses and things like that. But there's no history and culture in those countries to connect you with. And, uh, you know, the hotels and places that we'll put you in uh, give you this uh, incredible experience. And as time go along, our goal is just to um, have better lodging as a uh, change uh, you know, some of the lodging on the last Tanzania journey to give us an even better experience by uh, changing our uh, two resorts uh, to something more dynamic on the beach and more outside of the city. So that's uh, the flow of just looking at these schedule. So we just got back from the Tanzania Roots and Culture journey, November 16th to the 27th. And so that was another one of our logistic uh, genius itinerary where you're going from you know, Arusha to Zanzibar Island uh, to Dar es Salaam and uh, you're in and out of different airports and all the things that we have scheduled and organized is just right there in place because for myself working on the, the schedule flow to the tour operators uh give them all of the details and directions to just have us organized in every single location uh so not sh sure always sure what if people are familiar with uh scheduling and itineraries and things like that uh some people have a hard time with dealing with one or two day scheduling but these are all schedules you put ahead of time uh best of your knowledge based on your experience and based on the, the flow we have and what the airlines offer and that's our schedule. So definitely want everyone to make sure that they click on the links, read the full itinerary. And then, you know, we also have a preparation list, uh, which goes through, through a list of things to be prepared for, clear on, pack, bring, and get ready. So as time go along, uh, we especially on the private uh, calls for the different uh, countries, those are things that we go through the, directly. So we're on our way to South Africa, December 24th to January 4th. So that's another incredible itinerary, five days in Johannesburg and four days in Cape Town. You did for Christmas and New Year's. For So for people who are open to those kind of holiday journeys, I try to work it uh, between Ghana, South Africa, and maybe another country to do December schedules. Only thing I'm noticing is just the South Africa schedule is getting more expensive because it's the holiday time and uh, Delta don't play with the you know that direct flight that they have going from Atlanta directly to Johannesburg. Uh, so that's... Uh, the prices of those things. Now we're setting up the year in Liberia and I added Morocco, two days in Morocco based on the flight schedule from World Air Morocco, um, World Air Morocco. Uh, so that also does give us flexibility to this, you know, take one segment of flight, you're in Morocco, 
Yeah, you enjoy the day trip. Then uh, you head out to Liberia, enjoy the Liberia journey, come back, enjoy some more of Morocco, and then uh, head back. Uh, so that is a historical and cultural journey like uh, like nothing else is this, except people don't see a lot of Liberia schedules. So we had us to bring this to the forefront and lay it out. And uh, we have nice lodging experience um, at the um, two beach resort there in the country. So you're there on two beautiful beaches in the country the whole time. Then we are set for our Ghana repatriation investment journey, July 11th to the 23rd. So that's the 24th journey of a lifetime to Ghana and it's our most iconic journey. We have business conference, we have our land community that uh, we've been working on over the few years and you know, showing people more of what we are putting in place as far as getting people their homes built and legal paperwork and just building the energy to where you have a future community and we can eventually move all of our business and technology operations from Georgia uh, there in that town. So it's one of those things where, you know, you plan for it ahead of time versus uh, the end. You know, we know the situation that uh, that while we have this momentum in America, might as well take advantage of the opportunity and build what we need to build in Africa with the momentum that we have. So I'm uh, always looking forward to showing everyone our, our business office there, our business house, and then showing, you know, different parts of the land uh, where people are building homes and whoever is available that's living there can always just give us a nice welcome. So definitely looking forward to that right now. We have a nice sized group uh, and just looking to add more people so we can just travel in style because Ghana is one of the few countries where we have um, five hour bus rides. Uh, you're going from Cape Co you're going from Accra to Cape Coast Elmina and from Cape Coast Elmina to Kumasi and then from Kumasi back to Accra. So those are some uh, long hour rides. So historically we always have these big buses uh, with TVs, reclining seats, uh, USB ports. And then we do some of our programs um, on the bus itself, uh, with a, you know, since it has a nice microphone. So that's uh, what we're looking for. And that's uh, one of the only journeys that we're just looking to really just push more people. And the Egypt journey, Egypt is incredible, just like Ghana, because you have these different bus sizes. So no matter what the size of your group is, you know, you just get a you know, bigger bus. And um, you know, Egypt, uh, Ghana, South Africa, more well-organized for tourism. So... They have these big tour buses that you just always want to shoot for. But if not, then, you know, you just deal with the Toyota Costa. Uh, but it's time to get back to that energy of uh, Ghana and um, really this. Uh, and then since we're doing more of our land and investments and it's only true country that we have uh, a real repatriation connection and investment, it's always a journey where we look to get bigger groups. So since we haven't done a group in a year, uh, usually the last few journeys, it's been about 16 to eight of us. So. You work the numbers that uh, put you in 30s. Uh, so purposely I adjusted the journey to where we didn't do another Ghana journey for a good 14 months, which is one of the longest uh, since we started in 2006. So family, that journey is still available and ready for you. Uh, then uh, Egypt, looking forward to uh, my second time in Egypt and our first time doing the um, journey of a lifetime to uh, Egypt. So we have all of the uh, historical places from from Cairo to uh, Luxor to Aswan to Abu Simbel, but also we have some day time off at a basically a Echo Park slash um, um, a resort right there in Ergada. Uh, so if you ask me how we're gonna get around a big country like Egypt, um, one of the things I love about countries like Egypt uh, and Tanzania, they have an incredible airlines. So we do have some flying from Cairo to um, Abu Simbel. Um, and then we are flying from Urgada to uh, Cairo, uh, internal flights. So that's all on Egypt Air. And then one of the most fabulous thing that we have, um, anyone have been to Egypt and they haven't been on the, um, you know, the Egypt cruise, whether you're going from, from Aswan to Luxor or the other way around, it's incredible. And uh, just going down the Nile Valley, you hear about all these historical places uh, throughout the history of time. Um, one of the most a circle country I can think of um, in, the, in the history of our world. And, you know, you're seeing things that you, you've you seen in movies, you've read in books, but the scope of the itinerary, you know, is the goal was to put everything that we did in Egypt in uh, 2004 and then add you know, more modern day vibrant feel to where, you know, we can just enjoy other aspects of the uh, journey, including nightlife and this uh, social energy. Uh, so, this is our masterpiece journey, and I got my good sister, Matrell, on a mission. Um, that's our, 
our YouTube uh, page, uh, she traveled me to Ghana and then during the COVID era, she ended up in Egypt and you know, she was just, you know, she started doing these Egypt journeys and she reached out to me. And, you know, one of the things is if you're, if we got good people in a country that can handle business, that's always perfect. Uh, because once we have good people in the country, uh, it's a, you know, it's a dynamic duo matchup. I can handle all of the logistics, all of the organization stuff here, and then, um, give them full directions on where we need to be at and the different times and the different dates and enhance uh, that's um, the purpose of uh, creating a itinerary to where it just flows uh, so you'll see all the flight schedule match up to the same flight schedules on the um, the airline website so all those details update on Egypt so definitely looking forward to that and um, once we do some of these journeys I don't know when we do them back again because there's so many different countries but Based on the interest, you know, we'll keep on doing different countries. Uh, some countries, um, it's not that you don't want to go to them, but when you put schedules up, if people don't just gravitate towards it, you know, you just have to keep it moving. And what I'm talking about is countries like Rwanda and uh, Ethiopia, which, you know, you always want to just uh, go to them. But um, these are the countries that's been standing out. Then we're going to close the year out in South Africa again. It's the same exact schedule. Um, uh, the big difference from the last time is just an extra day and the flow of the schedule is adjusted a little bit, but it's a country I've been to twice in 2005. And sometimes when you're working for the airlines and you're just hanging out with your friends and going to different countries, you don't get the fullness of the countries. So when I looked at what I experienced in uh, South Africa versus what we created on the schedule, it was completely different and you know, made it more fruitful. And Senegal and Gambia, that's another one that I love to go to, but it's been it's been a fight over the you know the time frame. Just to, I've only I've only been able to complete two of these Senegal and Gambia schedules, and uh, we're doing a lot better now. The spacing it out to two years, so looking forward to going back there. I do my best to get flights from Senegal to the Gambia to avoid the long ride between countries, um, but I'm just hoping that um, Senegal Air stick with their flight schedule to just do the simple one hour flight. Uh, so on the itinerary, I have it laid out based on their flight schedule. And as time go along, we'll just adjust to whatever their flight schedule is and then you know, make it uh, simpler. Um, I realize that I just rather for us to just get to where we need to get to versus the long ride. Some of the long rides from country to country, like Ghana, Togo, Benin in the past uh, was not bad. Uh, but trying to find more ways to where, you know, we're just we're cutting out long drives. And that's what I was talking about with the Tanzania itinerary. Instead of driving to places and doing all those things, we get on ferry boats and these are luxury ferry boats and get on nice uh, domestic flights. Uh, so, but Senegal and Gambia, Senegal always have these incredible uh, sites. Um, Gori Island, number one, the uh, African Renaissance um, monument and also the, the uh, black slash African civilization museum, two of the most historical sites that we have. And then Pink Lake is always a nice journey, uh, camel riding and uh, four wheel driving in the sand dunes. Um, and make you feel like you're somewhere in Dubai or somewhere, but so add a little bit of adventure and things like that. And in South by South Africa, the adventure part of that is the cable cars and going up the table mountains. And then when I work uh, Brazil back on a schedule, hopefully November, 2025, um, the 2025 is a light year schedule and just maybe two, three journeys, but looking to work that on there, we have these incredible cable cars in Brazil uh, to give you a nice um, sightseeing ventures from going from one mountain to the next in a cable car. And uh, for those who are scared of heights and things like that, I know all those things that we do that look scary, whether we're on a canopy walk and we're all the way up in the middle of the air, crossing our canopies, just moving and shaking. It's just um, for people who are open to more adventures, but for, for those who are not just open to adventure, adventuring like that, then um, you know, relax at the resort, um, get some massages, kick back and things like that. So when you're looking at itinerary to think about the things that you really want to do and the things that you may not want to do much, just uh, plan it out to where you can just make a time as fruitful as possible. So family, those are the current uh, journeys that we have um, where you can click and all the details are there. And then once you scroll down, um, the, as far as any upcoming conference call, this one is for December 10th. So uh, sometime in December, I'll work out some future schedules of conference calls um, and just keep things going and put about two or three more up there for the first set of segments uh, for the year for January, February, and March. But all of the flow of information is the same. 
And for those who are listening and uh, you don't have my number and you need to call me, you can always just click on this WhatsApp uh, link and then they'll send a message or you can call me. Then all the videos and photos are on our social pages. You can look to the left side of the page if you're looking at the desktop or laptop view. If you're on your phone, then it's, um, you know, you'll see the uh, social icons on the top or the bottom. Uh, but from TikTok, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, all of that is a showcase of, um, you know, from my background, uh, what we've been doing in this uh, business and all the places that we've gone to and all of the highlights. And what you see is this experience of beautiful brothers and sisters uh, traveling together all over the world, enjoying their experience that they work hard for all their life to where, you know, you're spending some of that money on yourself to enjoy an incredible journey. And uh, the goal is to this accommodate everyone everyone have different accommodations whether it's flights and things i tell everyone to communicate with me and even so when you're on the tour the best thing to do is not talk to your tour members they can't help you just come talk with me and tell me what you're looking to do or tell me what you need or things like that and we work it out so that's one of the things that i gotta figure out a way to get people to stop doing because people will ask the other tour members all kind of questions and they can't answer your questions um so uh, we always have these moments where we have things open for questions and answer whether i'm here throughout the week or whether we're there in the country and things like that. Uh, definitely want to make sure that everyone get the best of their journey and their investment. Uh, we don't put all this work into this situation for you not to just come out saying this is one of your greatest journeys and the greatest experience. And as we look into build more energy in Africa, that's our connection to build a fruitful connection in Africa and keep working on our diplomatic connection. And um, as time go along, uh, create better opportunities for our children in the diaspora to connect and do things in Africa, just like any other nations and race of people, especially when I'm in East Africa, I see all aspects of people all over the world. And they're not there. Some of them are enjoying tourism, but uh, they're building their future and their enterprises in Africa. Uh, the biggest thing you see in East Africa is just a generation of Indians has been there um, since the British brought them there. And since uh, they saw the great opportunities in Africa. Uh, but West Africa is a little bit different. You see the Lebanese domination and you see some aspects of Indians and other people. But as time come along, you're going to see more and more people and more and more people doing different things. So uh, even though we're doing tourism, it's still an energy of investment and an energy of putting out good vibes to motivate and get more people into connecting to Africa. And these are all a list of our Facebook group pages. And these are all pages with this updates, uh, whether it's pictures, videos or any posts. And this is the incredible collection of uh, uh, celebrating 17 years strong. This is 32 different uh, journeys across the African continent. And one is this Brazil. Uh, so showcasing some of our group pages, you may see uh, 10 of us. You may see up to 40 plus of us, uh, but that's based on the time and the flow. But in the past, uh, we never had this multiple journey. So it's still come up to the same amount of numbers of people that uh, we take. So that is our last uh, journey, Tanzania journey. We're there at the cultural heritage place, which is an incredible place for sightseeing and shopping. Uh, so I always find these incredible places to take us to and smiling faces. And this time we had these white Africa for Africans t-shirt. And our last uh, journey, the 23rd journey of a lifetime right there in Ghana, where we're there by Independence Square in the green Africa for Africans t-shirt. And earlier this year, we're in Senegal and in Gambia and this is one of our circle favorite pictures at Gori Island. That's the African Holocaust dungeon, uh, which gives a presentation. So um, Senegal, the Gambia, Tanzania, Ghana, the popular countries that we have on the list, uh, all of those uh, itineraries have uh, at least one or two days dealing with the African Holocaust. Senegal and Gambia have one day each. Uh, Ghana has uh, two days and Tanzania has uh, one day. Uh, so along with the, the shopping, the general roots and culture. Now, those are some of the things that we add in. And if you talk about South Africa, then you talk about, uh, you know, you talk about the different um, places that you go to that that they, you get presentation about the apartheid system. So, a mix of different things, um, and uh, some of them are happy sites, and some of them are very painful and sad. But uh, it's a part of an introduction to Africa that we're looking to deliver. And so throughout the time frame, you see these uh, Ghana tours like almost every six months um, and uh, some bigger than others. Uh, but it's just always different historical sites that we find ourselves in Ghana that's taking pictures. Uh, so that's uh, the 2022 flow. And as you go down, you just see more flow of us. And even COVID-19 couldn't stop us. Uh, Ebola didn't stop us. And we just determined to keep this connection in Africa because uh, these journeys, um, some of the people in, in these photos, 
Some of them have moved on to this living and doing business in different parts of Africa. And some of them, uh, it has opened up their world to traveling and experiencing a different world. Uh, so that's our goal is to get your mind um, out of America. And when you're in the country, the best thing I can recommend is uh, America will be a distraction while you're traveling with us. So myself personally, I try to, outside of the customers and business people I need to deal with and communicate with, which I communicate with while we're just you know, moving around, I try not to get caught up into whatever craziness is going on in America. Uh, is this, is there going to be things maybe going on with your family and things like that? Best thing I tell everyone, uh, well, I can't tell you what to do, but just focus and enjoy your time while you're there. And, um, you know, certain things that's going on, try to just work it out when you can get it, when you can just enjoy it when you get back. Because the worst thing is to see someone just not really in a good flow because of something else going on in America. And sometimes, you know, you have people, family members, they'll just stress you, you're there. And you know, safe grounds. You with me, my staff, my crew, and all the people that uh, host us in the country, and they you know worry about you or whatever. I'm not even sure why, but uh, don't let anyone distract your journey. Um, this uh, the days go by fast. By the time you know it, you're back to where you are. So it's the memories and the good times that you just want to just focus on and enjoy. North Tanzania journey, uh, and this one is at the National Museum. Um, um, the brother in the middle uh, saw us, you know, I did the last Tanzania uh, tour book. And then he saw that is, uh, you know, is, you know, is the picture that he took with us was in there. And I don't know, it does get him excited, but uh, people are just always honestly excited to see us, especially when they see us show up in museums and other people come before other people come at the same time with us and they leave early and we're in the museum and we're actually just uh, spending our time in the museum to learn about all aspects of life in the museum. Like you go to a place like Tanzania, you, you're talking about uh, anthropology. It is still East Africa, which you know, uh, we always hear certain saying that um, the cradle of mankind or humankind is there in East Africa, whether it's Ethiopia, Tanzania. So you have a lot of historical places uh, as far as the museum. And I try not to just kill us with museum, but in, like the Tanzania journey, you have two museums in Arusha and two museums in Dar es Salaam. And then you have one in, um, in Zanzibar. But that's the way you get access to the, the, you know, the history of the culture of the country because it is a you know, roots and culture uh, journey. At 2021, this is one of the historical sites, uh, George Padmore says we go through Ghana um, places, historical sites that uh, we, know, we honestly keep alive because when you look at other people at itinerary, sometimes you know, we don't emphasize that it's important to go to places where people have you know, they dedicated their life to keep a connection with us from the African diaspora to the African continent. So this is George Padmore of, uh, of uh, Trinidad, and he's buried there in Ghana. Just like you see Du Bois, uh, uh, Du Bois uh, presentation there in Ghana, and he's buried there in Ghana from America. So those are all of the things that we try to just historically find. And if we have good people in the country, we try to go visit them or try to invite them to connect with us. But as you scroll down, there's more and more uh, group photos, and you can just go all the way down to the end of 2006. And 2017, lots of different uh, journeys. Uh, sometimes you just have that uh, opportunity in Africa where you just go from one country to the next and you have groups and, or you're working with other people. So that was uh, from 2017 to now, it's been these multiple countries. And then from 2016 to 10 years earlier, uh, what you see is this uh, one journey. So spend 10 years building up a journey in Africa to build a great experience. So it'll be a lot easier to do different countries. And for the, all the people that's always asking us, what about other countries? You know, you, you know it took us a while, but uh, we're there now to where we have uh, seven countries on a rotation. And that is the foundation, you know, the foundation, um, Photo right there, those, uh, us uh, right there, small small group of us, eight of us there at uh, Elmina, African Holocaust Dungeons uh, there in Elmina. Uh, so that's where we set it off and built from there on. So below is that link for Liberia. That's still pushing our Liberia journey. And uh, I haven't changed everything to where it's a library in Morocco, but uh, it's the same thing. And it includes those two incredible days in uh, Morocco as we just try to get your taste of different parts of uh, Africa with different culture. Uh, so let me scroll back up. And the next thing I want to do is I want to go to, um, I want to just click on this tour book link. Uh, the tour books, I only have them printed for the tour groups. And I do have a few extra copies here, especially when people come here for presentations. 
but uh, we're limited on those because it's just never enough that you can print. Uh, so on the main menu, uh, once you uh, scroll down past the uh, the general tour page, you not the general tour page, before you get to the general tour page at the top, it will say Africa Tour Books, the Journey of a Lifetime Tour Program. So this is the thing that, uh, this is our big standout along with uh, the t-shirts and the bags and uh, the pens. It's a full tour book and that tour book, it tells you your entire program, updated itinerary and every single different site that we're gonna go to is in the book to where you know about where you're gonna go to and it gives you a nice sort of uh, dialogue about uh, where we're going to. And naturally when you, get to, when you get to the country, the tour guide and myself, we go over the schedule and go over all the things that we're gonna do. And for those who have traveled with us, when you look back at the guidebook, 100% uh, of everything that we have in there is completed. And as far as the flow of the schedule, um, everything is executed as uh, best as you can do with this creating long-term schedules. So once you click on any of the books, uh, it's a flip book and you can just click on and flip through. But the next uh, thing you can actually do is actually uh, come over here to where it says download option, click on download and you can download in PDF. And then there's these other formats that was included in the software. So I just leave it, but uh, the best thing to do is just download a PDF copy and it just download right into your computer or you can just view the digital uh, book. Uh, so as, as the tours go by, um, the goal is just to create the books. And once they're created before the tour, it's just to upload them to the site. Uh, so members that are traveling have access to it, but I usually send the uh, PDF version to the uh, to the group WhatsApp page where we want everyone to just be on WhatsApp to where any updates or information I send to you, you have it there on WhatsApp and uh, you can just download it and save it. And uh, as time go along, as we need to communicate, uh, you post messages and then we're when we're traveling, especially at the beginning when everyone is moving around and we're just posting, hey, we're here at this gate, uh, we're here at this location, uh, things like that. And then if you need to make a call to me or just call anyone else, uh, you, know, you connect to your Wi-Fi there at the hotel or you can just uh, have your own data and then you just make the phone calls and just call on WhatsApp. So it's something that we use and create a group page for every single tour that we do and just have everyone on there. And then once the tour is over, you can remove yourself or you can stay on there for networking purpose. Uh, it's all good from there on. It's up to everyone. And then if I have future information to post, I'll post. But these are some of the uh, tour books. And it's not every single last one since it's a whole lot of tours, but I made sure that um, it represents the different countries. So that's uh, Tanzania, uh, Ghana, Senegal, and the Gambia. And I want to say I have a, um, our, our South Africa one on here. And that's our South Africa. And this is our incredible Ghana Togo Benin journey, uh, which that was it right there. That was the last of us going through three countries. Uh, it's just too much visas to get and too much driving, you know, even though it was a great, great experience, uh, but at the same time too. Uh, that's why when these these opportunities are come up, uh, with multiple journeys, you just take advantage of it. But for the most part, to get the fullness of the countries, we just do a standalone journey. In this case, Ghana was the full journey, but added uh, extra two extra two days in Togo and three days in uh, Benin. So made it, you know, it was a long journey, but a uh, nice journey. And as usual, we'll pull off the logistic operation from one country to the next and back. So that's uh, that's a combination of me and my partners and, and you know, the people who provide accommodations with us, whether it's the uh, airlines or whether it's a hotel. So all of us are working together to make sure you have the best journeys. So family, that is our tour book and lots of other uh, information there on our on our website, um, you know, information about Marcus Garvey. I have some great speeches and some great details and then some general information about um, investments and then about us. Um, it talks about our company operation and also talks about uh, my bio and um, you know, so things like that is there. And then to get access to the videos, when you click on the link, it will take you to youtube.com and this is my historical YouTube page. Have you ever? Right. So that is the um, yeah, the trailer or the presentation, and I would just talk about uh, my journey connecting to Africa. So that's um, 
whether you are new to the page or not, uh, that's the first thing that plays. So you may just want to mute it because it's just going to play automatic. So from here, uh, these are some of the last uh, videos uh, in um, Tanzania. So you always see us with videos at the airports and us just kind of building up the energy. And then most of the videos are always recorded at tour sites. Um, I just really just believe that these sites are dynamic and they're very educational and then more of us should learn more about the history. So if nothing else, I just record the full presentation for the most part. Um, and they're usually a short, short clip still, six minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, the main thing about the uh, YouTube page, once you get there, you're going to see these multiple playlists. So from the get-go right here, you see uh, Tanzania, November 2023. Uh, you see the last uh, Ghana tour, the Senegal and Gambia tour. All of the tours that I've shown in the, um, the, the group photos. So from this playlist to the next playlist, that's what you'll see. Uh, also, all of the video highlights for our Black Star Pan-African community is like over 150 videos, but it will show you from the, the, the first time when we're there with just us walking to the land. And yeah, you hear my son in the background, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When we're going to get there? Uh, why are we here? And things like that. And I'm just showing people the land and people like, this is what you came to show us. I was like, yeah, this is a jungle and we're going to clear it and we're going to start building homes. And it's always funny when you look at those things because then you look back in the future and then people are like, yes, we did it. And I was like, that's what it takes. It just takes a vision, but you're not going to always get all these things completed in one shot. So sometimes instead of waiting, waiting for the $10 million that you need to build a town, build a community, you start with a foundation and then you go from there. So it's our way to build things based on, you know, the iconic book by uh, Amos Wilson, The Blueprint for Black Power, which she focused on economics. It's one of those books I studied a long time ago, almost 20 years ago. And I remember just going through the key parts of economics of what he's explaining. And, you know, you get a lot from some of these uh, historians and researchers who just put good details. It's just some of them are not logistics uh, and people like ourselves who just get out there and, and do the work, but they put the framework of things in place to where you can learn from it. Uh, so that was all the vision of what, we, what I always will, I will always talk about, Black cooperative economics. People ask me, how do other people get what they need to get done? I said, other people put their money together. That's why the Indians live so well in Africa and the, and the Lebanese. And I was like, you know, well, you know, we're not backed by any nation, but, you know, we can put our energy together and just, you know, represent. So that's why the movement is called Africa for the Africans uh, as a way to just connect us to Africa. And the key thing, Africa and Africans in there. Uh, but it's a moment to connect us to figuring it out on how we can be a part of the investment future of Africa and not just be consumers and just people who come just to enjoy tourism and just enjoy holidays. So more and more are multiple playlists. Um, and then you have the one right here that shows the South Africa journey, the Brazil journey and the Ethiopia journey, uh, which just got South Africa back on a journey. And so work in Ethiopia and Brazil, but those are some of the iconic uh, experience. And then right here, I have Egypt 2004. So it's, uh, it's always scary for me to look at this video. This is like almost uh, 20 years ago. And it's just looking at myself and hearing the words from, you know, and it's, but that's who we are. We're people who have made our dedication to a movement, a connection, and no matter whether it's Ebola, coronavirus, or whatever the situation is, um, we know we find ways to just make it work. And the blessings always come from the people who show interest and say, I want to come here. I want to, uh, I want consultation. I want to do business with you guys. Uh, I want a piece of land. I want to build a home. And all of that is a part of this, how we pay all the people in Africa and uh, support all the people from the hotels to the, the different um, places that we go to. Um, and uh, I was in Tanzania and the guides always tell me that they appreciate all of us coming because all the entrance fees is why you see things look so different and renovations over the period of time. So I always want to encourage all of us around the world, regardless of whoever you are, as a people or person, you come to Africa, you know, spend some money and, you know, and contribute to keeping uh, the world's greatest historical um, continent, um, the history uh, preserved. Yeah, so that is um, all of these uh, different uh, playlists. So from 2017, religiously, I've just created a playlist for every single tour. And some you may find 50 videos, some you may find 250 videos. It just depends on this. Sometimes you just get into a flow, especially when you first get to a country and you're not guaranteed to go back and you just, you have all your, you know, all your equipment and extra batteries and you just record and pictures and videos, pictures and videos. 
And that's the energy of the Egypt um, documentary right there. It's six hours and that's removing certain things and that takes you across the Nile Valley. So that was one of those motivations. So, and in some countries you have more circle of things to sh showcase and share. And you scroll down, these are all of the conference calls that uh, we have um, and interviews. Uh, once you click on this link, it's a whole lot of videos and it goes back to 10 years of all of our conference calls and presentations and things like that. And uh, more multiple playlists. Um, some of these are African Holocaust sites and a Sinman's is another one. Uh, school supplies, drumming and so on. So that is the uh, showcase of uh, the uh, website with all of the tour details and uh, access to all of the videos. And then for those who want to see the photos, uh, once you get to Facebook, just click on photos. And some of the galleries, I'm still adding more to. But once you click on albums, you see an incredible list of galleries. And it goes all the way back to uh, December 2006. So those are pictures, videos, and documentation. Uh, so let me uh, stop the uh, screen sharing and uh, get back to see if anyone have any questions or anything. So yes, family, so that was a um, presentation just to give a general overview. Uh, for those who are traveling to different countries, you may have specific country questions about the different countries and things like that. So right now is a perfect time. Just unmute yourself. Let us know. Um, what that journey you're traveling on, your name, and um, what you're looking forward to connecting with us on the Africa tour itinerary. Greetings, Bamani, Teresa, Delaware. Greetings, sister. Greetings, how are you? You excited? You're good. Ready? Another good. Ah, uh, yes, another journey, yes. Uh, the weight uh, on the airplane, the luggage weight. What is the luggage weight inside of Africa? Because we don't need to know from America to Africa. We need to know Af when we're in Morocco to Liberia. Okay, perfect. Um, for the Royal Air Morocco situation, for us flying to our Liberia, that situation is a little simpler. Uh, once I book you on uh, Royal Air Morocco, it's uh, two check bags. So we don't really have any uh, domestic flight. Uh, the, the flight that goes from Casablanca to, um, to Monrovia is still the international flight where it has uh, two check bags. So that's simple for that one. But when you're talking about uh, countries like Tanzania and South Africa, the uh, baggage restriction is one check bags. So individuals looking to bring two check bags, you just have to understand you have to pay for those check bags. And then some situations uh, for those who need connection flights, maybe also where I have to do a domestic flight in America and then connect us to an international flight and it's two different airlines. Uh, like example, um, we have, um, I got my brother right here, uh, Dion, he's coming from um, Chicago. So I would set up something on United America or Delta and get him connected to, um, you know, to JFK. But the baggage situation on whatever is booked on that ticket, they'd have to go with. So usually on Delta Airlines, I would just do, you know, wherever you're leaving from, and then it's two bags the whole way. So each uh, flight schedule is, uh, is uh, different. And, then, and those are some of the difference in those countries. But uh, we're, we're good for uh, uh, Morocco and um, good for Liberia, especially if you... And the weight is what? Uh, the weight is 50 pounds. Two check bags, 50 pounds. pounds. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. That's important to know. <laughs> but, but, but don't you always travel one bag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the other bag has the school supplies. Yes, so I have one... one uh, bag is my clothing. That's true, but the other bag has the school supplies. Uh, so that's so perfect. we still have two bags. <laughs> so that's perfect. Uh, so when you get to the country, you get one with a one bag, and you can use the next to, to to bring things back. But for the people who are in like South Africa, uh, they just have to you know they can get rid of the one bag of school supplies and have one bag to check in. But if not, then they just have to this you know pay the difference in the. Uh, and the baggage cost, which the baggage costs uh, family um, for extra for for those for the airlines that only allow you one check bags, it's usually about anywhere from 60 to $100, just to give everybody a clarity. So you can choose to just pack one bag or if you just have two bags. And those are uh, countries I mentioned, um, South Africa, Tanzania, uh, you just and then 
uh, Senegal and Gambia in the future once we take that uh, domestic flight from Senegal to the Gambia and back. Okay. And Dallas does have a flight directly to Morocco, right? Yes, uh, they have a flight from Washington, Dallas, and Royal Air Morocco to take you to Casablanca. Now, the flight that leaves from New York that go to Casablanca, when I look at the flight schedule, it's about, it's about I want to say it's about one hour difference. So it's not that much different. So example, if we have some people who say, hey, it would be better for my accommodations to be uh, to leave from Washington, Dallas and get to a Casablanca versus JFK, New York. We'll work that, uh, work that out. Uh, and that's a simple booking arrangement. That's all I'll say to everyone that. Right, because see, I'm closest to Philadelphia. So that would probably work out better for you. So Philadelphia to Dallas, to Dallas, to Casablanca, done, as opposed to coming to New York. So I thought you liked New York. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, oh, it was so much fun. We did get there in time, no problem. Um, we got back, no problem. <laughs> but it's a hike. It's a hike. Yeah, I can see why people don't want and to do you, it. Right and you understand, now we got an airport in Delaware. Oh, you don't believe it, but it, it doesn't go far. No, I'm always wondering that because... in Newcastle that I can walk from my house to. So, you know, I'm now really crazy. So, <laughs> so do they have flights from uh, Newcastle uh, to um, JFK on like no, United, no, Delta? No, they go to Florida and Puerto Rico and all kind of places. But so now I'm passing two airports or three airports. You know, you have Newcastle, you have Pennsylvania, you have Newark before I get to Kennedy. It, it's craziness. <laughs> Of yeah. course, I didn't think about that last year. I was excited. <laughs> uh, this oh, year, you talking about having year. to go to New Year? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. so for those who are listening, okay. um, you know, uh, wherever you iconically need flights from, uh, we'll work the uh, situation, um, and especially when you yeah, work. But I know uh, Philly goes to Dallas, and I know Dallas is a direct flight to Africa, different parts of Africa. So you so. need a flight from, uh, okay, gotcha, from Philadelphia to... Um, to Washington, Dallas. Mm -hmm. All right. So that could be worked out. That's uh, that's United. So let me just get you there. And then from there, you just, uh, you know, and you know, one of these things, once we switch in different airlines and it's not part of like the, the Delta Sky team, uh, in this situation, you'd have to just, once you um get to uh, Washington, Dallas, uh, you just have, you to, have to collect check. your luggage. Yeah. And, and, check and then thing. take the luggage over to the international side. Yes, go so back what, through, check in. Unfortunately. This, that, this and that. And right? Unfortunately, and that's why I usually work it out with Delta because with Delta, once you, you know, once we check out with, with our bags at our, you know, our departing location, we, did, we get at our final destination. But for those who are traveling to, uh, you know, to Liberia with me, we definitely have to make sure when you leave from one city to, the next, to New York, you have to check your bags because Royal Air Morocco is not going to provide any connections and they're not affiliated with, Delta United and um, we'll also use oh, Delta United or American, okay. which we'll do the connection flight with. And then when you know when we do our when we do a uh, more for our Liberia uh, uh, private um, in a schedule, you know we're going to talk more about that in the details as far as the flights, the sequence, and making sure everybody knows um, what we have set up. Okay, and then the flight that goes from. JFK, that's an easier deal. You're saying? No, it's just it's everything. Honestly, is just based on um, people need for accommodations. Um, like we have people leaving from New York there, and then some people their flights are easier to connect to New York. But if some people are finding out their flight is easier to connect to Washington, Dallas, uh, to save time and moving around and unnecessary stuff, then that's that's the good option that we can use both of them because Royal Air Morocco has that direct flight from both places. Mm -hmm. So. That's our logistic sequence that we have. And then the good thing is once you get on Royal Air Morocco, it's a simple schedule to where you, um, you, know, you fly from um, that location to Casablanca and then we just go out and then come back and then make our way directly to Liberia. So those would be direct flights. Mm -hmm. So that is our incredible sequence. So hope you love the flow of the, I know it's, uh, it's, uh, 
I know nothing could compare to the to um, the Ghana Togo Benin November 2017. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, uh, we had so but, much fun. But we learned to this. Yes, but, we learned but, to be, but so we're going Gambia. Come on, so we're going Gambia was nice. That bus was rolling and went to Ghana. Then it came back to <laughs> Togo Benin. Then the bus turned around and went back to Ghana. And I said, never, ever again. As far as, I, but the thing of it is, when you have the big bus, you can do so much on the bus. So you're not really worried about the time. But I tell people mm. when they, they ask me about the different countries and how we do things, I was like, you know, you know, now that more countries have flights and ferry boats, you try to use that. But some countries, you literally have to get on a bus and drive around. Mm. And, and that is Ghana right there, along with, I even was going to do the same thing to um, in Ivory Coast. Uh, so you know, Ghana and Ivory Coast and make our way around on the bus uh, from Levi to, to Ivory Coast. But nevertheless, uh, uh, let hey, me Hey, Mr. Lisa, my roommate, Gambia. <laughs> hey, girl. Peace hey, and blessings. Tanzania was great. You missed it. <laughs> yes, uh, Yes, sir, Kubi, appreciate you um, um, on that journey. Um, and you, and you, you already know Kubi already. She was, the, she was the highlight and great energy. So always happy to just have people that are just, you know, can, you know, bring bring good good vibes and good energy. And just, yes, ready to go back to Egypt for time. And then and talk, All right. and talk about Egypt. Go. You know, I don't play because <laughs> It's Kemet. There you go. You know it's I know. K E M E T. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know Peace I know. Sister. You know I know. Don't mess with me on Come this up. channel. We're carrying on. We're supposed to do business here. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah, as a matter of fact, Akubi is look happy to see you because she was asking me about you and I was told Thank her, you. that I was going to. She doesn't return my call. <laughs> well, you may have the wrong number. Um, no, but I think okay. I was, I was texting uh, the number. Currency. Back, back to. to <laughs> Business here. Yes, yeah, so uh, currency country. exchange. What's the story with that in the two countries? So what I would recommend, um, especially when we get to Liberia, we'll change out money at the Forks Bureau. And I got my sister Wayne on here, um, and she's coordinating the Liberia journey. She's our a tour operator. She's on the call. But uh, what we do when we get there, we just you know we'll have somebody that can change the money for us, or we go to a bureau. But as far as um, Casablanca. Once we get to the airport, just change the amount of money that you need for Casablanca. Let me unmute someone because let me see who is. All right, Gail, let me meet you. Maybe you're. All right, there you go. All right, Kuvi, let me mute you. All right, so perfect. So um, sometimes the feedback is in um, the line that's not muted. Uh, so let, let me see what I was going to uh, say. As far as um, Casablanca, what you do is you get your uh, money at the airport. And then if you, and then you can, you know, since we're coming back again, uh, if you have some extras, you can just uh, keep it. But that's what we do. And then uh, for the most part, in most of the countries, you get some money at the airport and also you get the money at the bureau. And then if you need to get to ATM machines uh, throughout the time frame, uh, we just the goal is to get you access to ATM machines and change your money, especially first thing in the morning or get it done in the evening to where you're ready for the next day. Uh, so those are the sequence. So the line is open, family. Let me know if uh, anyone have any questions. Just unmute yourself and let us know where you're traveling to and uh, your question and uh, your name and, and so on and what you're looking to accomplish on this uh, journey. Yeah, hey, please. Please. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Montagna, a.k.a. Clyde. Uh, we're going to um, South Africa in a few weeks. The um, Bomani, the the T-shirts, I, I believe you are providing us with uh, uh, T-shirts as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so it comes. Do, uh, do you have the sizes? Do you need our sizes? I want to say I have uh, your information from the um, the messages that was replied back from the uh, passport. So I do have everyone's size, but when I'm doing it, if I don't have someone's size, I just usually just communicate with them immediately. Uh, but yes, the T-shirt is included. I don't know uh, the color sequence, but I have that on my list to work on in the next day or two to get it done. Okay, okay. All right, I'll I'll I'll, I'll hit you up on WhatsApp with my size anyway. Yeah, you can text it to me because uh, more than likely uh, the T-shirt will be. Kobe, let me meet you again. 
Uh, more than likely, uh, the T-shirts will be uh, finished up uh, in the morning to uh, an order will be sent. Uh, that way I can have it back by next week. And, and then I'll order some bags and everything else I have here. And then the books, I'll just keep on typing the book and let's get it finished. And it'll take a few days to publish or print. Okay, thank you. Yes, so definitely looking forward to uh, connecting with you and, uh, and join this incredible journey in this uh, working with our people in South Africa to have everything organized. And then uh, since it's a holiday journey, uh, when we get there, you know, we'll find about all the cool things that we can do, um, especially for New Year's in Cape Town, which is going to be real nice out there at the waterfront. And all of our tickets are coordinated and organized for South Africa. That's our international flight on Delta. And in South Africa, we have, um, in South Africa, Johannesburg to Cape Town, we have one domestic flight, it's a two hour flight. Uh, so all that is uh, also set. So Clyde, let me know if you have any other questions or anything you wanna share, since, especially since we're leaving out uh, soon. No, I think I think I'm good. I'm go I'm gonna text you the my size and um uh, and that's it. I'm just looking forward to it, man. All right, perfect. That'll work. Excellent. All right. All right, Kim. Um, if I get you this unmute. Um. Hey, Bomani. So I'm going to uh, Ghana in July. There were a couple of websites that were listed on your um page for learning Chui, which I couldn't, uh, one of them was not active. The second one wasn't active. And then the first one was, um, I, I tried to send an, an email and it didn't, it got returned to me. Yeah, the person that was um, was doing that for us, I guess he just changed a lot of stuff, but I was telling him that to keep this the, the stuff together to where, you know, when we keep on um, creating the, uh, the tree language uh, translation that's on the website, they can also have someone that they can reach out to that uh, can, you know, that they can sign up for the classes. So that's the agreement that I had with uh, that organization. But since then they have, I guess they've changed their website into something else. So um, I'll make a note to go on there to um, see what I can get to be updated. Cause um, uh, some people are interested in learning the language and want to get them more access to information. But for now that uh, the little guide that we have that we put in the book and also on the uh, website is, um, is a, is, a, is a nice start and I'll get the tour guide to be more interactive, but um, I'll definitely I'll get that updated and find it's our new website. Okay, thanks. Brother Bobani. Excellent, uh, Green Zakubi. Hi, yeah, tell, <laughs> tell the sister Kim, she's smiling. Tell her I see her in Ghana. Oh, excellent. Uh, yes, yeah, so Kubi will be there in Ghana. Kubi, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, Kubi is one of our sisters that travel with us to almost all the countries, and she just um, always looking to meet new people. <laughs> okay, so she, I'll she, be she, there. So she's saying she's looking forward to meeting you. Great. Today, go, Kubi. Got you. Got a whole. Ever since you've been rolling with me, you have a whole lot of new friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying that now. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Um, and I'm sure most of them you like, so that's a good thing. Yeah, most, most. All right, that's perfect. All right, so family, the line is open. If anyone have any questions about uh, traveling with us to Africa this year or next year. And uh, Gail, your line was open. I'm not sure if you had a question. All right, so perfect. So Gail, your line is open now. I have a question. All right, uh, greetings, Wayne. Greetings, uh, how are you? I'm fine, yes, so. Perfect. Let me go just, on video. Let me, okay, let me go on video. And let me just reintroduce okay. you to everybody else. So, family, uh, this is our sister, okay, no uh, Wayne Wanda, and uh, she's our tour mm -hmm. operator um, that has the crew of people that we're going to be working with in Ghana, the tour guides and uh, uh, hosts in the country Liberia. Uh, of uh, Liberia. And then she's also the person that encouraged me to... Um, to, to get the people out uh, at, the, at the airport uh, when we get to Casablanca and take them out on a tour and uh, mm -hmm. told me about all the sequence of things that um, we can do in uh, Morocco. So this is just a, as of recent for those who haven't even heard because I haven't been able to even tell everyone that we just had to make some updates on a itinerary based on the Royal Air Morocco flight, which I realized that we can just make the best of it versus uh, wonder, you know, because they don't fly to uh, Liberia every day. So this may be a nice blessing. So uh, I have some new people that seem to be more open to the journey now. So 
But yeah, Wayne, yeah, go ahead and uh, uh, introduce yourself to everyone else and uh, let them know. And also, you'll be there in Liberia with us. Um, For sure, definitely. From the beginning to the end. <laughs> but Winnie basically yeah. want to make sure that this works out good because she don't always see like a, a big group of people with a, a program like us coming to Liberia so she want to make sure that okay. you know we're, we're that you know we're you know, taken care of so that's what I mentioned about all the people that we are working in the different countries they really go out their way to make sure that we're accommodated so I tell everybody be nice oh yeah I have to I have to and I, 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 at least I want you guys to experience not only what the settlers experienced that made them you know uh, want to stay and bring back more people back to the motherland through Liberia but I just want you guys to understand that Liberia is much more than what you see on Google and it's home actually I never met let me be honest with you I never met personally an African American who have lived or visited Liberia and never felt like they're at home I never and I'm not saying that because my parents are from Liberia but I'm just you know from my experience, even when it comes to not not just African Americans, Liberia, you any country that you find in West Africa, you will always see somebody from that country in Liberia. We have Nigerians, we have Ghanaians, we have Togolese, and normally when Africans from other countries want to immigrate to America, their first starting point is they don't have a family member. In America, the first starting point is Liberia. So most people who live in Liberia, they will always tell you, wow, Liberia is, is home. It's such a friendly country. I love Liberia. They always say that. Majority of the times. Majority. There you go. Definitely looking forward to it. And and then okay. and, um, basically, you know, even the connection that I had with you, I mean, you and I don't know. Uh, Gail, let me just meet you and I'll, I'll meet you, but your line of uh, feedback. Based on, uh, okay. you know, you know Color Genesis hooked me and it connected you and I, and you and I just uh, started talking and connecting. Um, and I appreciate him doing that because, uh, I, like I tell him, that needed someone in the country that can you know, have a staff, a crew, and then could just uh, help us accommodate. But at the same time, too, we you know we, we grow and work our business together to where we, uh -huh. you know, to where we build this for the future. Uh, so that was always a, a good look and a good workout. And the more and more I talk with you, the more and more you want to make sure that everything works out perfect. And oh, uh, for sure. make sure that we have the greatest Definitely. time in Liberia. And um, and then you have your people there at the Kenanja Resort. Um, and I'm sure you'll have them ready mm -hmm. for us. Um, and we can do oh, cool, yeah. cool things, <laughs> cool parties, and also welcome drumming, dancing, and then also yes. socializing out there in the resort. They'll be so happy. They'll be so happy. They'll be so thrilled. You know, Liberians, we, we love foreigners. That's like our <laughs> motto. <laughs> We love foreigners. And then especially when it comes to African Americans, we love them and we, we miss them coming back to Liberia. You know, all, before all of the, you know, the years of civil strife, African Americans always used to frequent Liberia, always. Like I, just last week I went to the supermarket. One guy asked me, it was an older guy, he asked me where I was from. I said Liberia. He said, oh my goodness. I've been, I've been longing to be somebody from Liberia for like such a long time. I lived there in the 1970s and that was the best years of my life. They always say the same thing, always. When I'm here at the nursing home, not this nursing home, but one of the nursing home I, I worked at a couple of weeks ago, I met a, uh, not a Liberian lady, she was an African American. And she was like, I know that accent. I said, really? She was like, you're from Liberia. I was there before. I was there in the 1980s. Oh, I, I always love to go back. I always long to go back. They always say the same thing. And even of recent years, too, now the African Americans that you meet in Liberia, most of the times, maybe they're married to a Liberian and they, they just love it. They just love the country. And they always say, wow, it's so sad that people don't know how beautiful this country is, how warm the people are. So sometimes, too, you have to think it's, you know, it's by design because Liberians are very friendly people, but it's by design that, you know, just the same way, you know, it was by design for Haiti, uh, the island of Haiti not to progress, you know? Who wants to know or who wants to see a black country like doing like exceptionally well in the world? 
So they have they always have to push that narrative. But in actuality, when you travel to Liberia, it's not like traveling to any other African country. And I know you guys will say, oh, that's because she's from Liberia. No, I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm just being real. You feel like home. You feel wanted. You feel accepted. When people see you, they say, oh, welcome back. Hey, brother, hey, sister. And it's not like that fake, cheesy type of, you know, mm-hmm. okay, let me call this person brother. And let me call this person sister. And let me sell them a bracelet. No, it's not like that. They want to be your friend. They want you to come back. They want you to, you know, they want that reconnection again. And I think that Bomani choosing Liberia in 2024 is 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 the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, perfect. And we get to work together and put together a dynamic program for the future. And then from here on, mm-hmm. uh, we build a foundation to where more and more people um, can come and do business and invest in Liberia. And then you have your people on the ground where when we do the business and investment conference, they'll showcase and share uh, options of living, doing business in the country. And Oh, and- yeah. And I think the good thing is the U.S. dollar is used everywhere in Liberia. So I, I heard you talking about what you would do at the Moroccan airport. At the Liberian airport, if you want to choose, if you choose to uh, change your money to Liberty, it's optional. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can, you can definitely do that. But <laughs> the the locals, let me be honest with you, the locals they want U.S. dollars. So <laughs> it's it's up to you. <laughs> the locals yeah. prefer U.S. dollars. It's up to you. So it's not like something that you have to be like, oh my gosh, that I have to change this money. I it's have to not, do this. I have to. Okay. So it's perfect. It's not like some of the other countries. Um, so perfect. Yeah, it's the same thing. It was yeah. in Tanzania, even though they use more of their money. But uh, all of the hotels and places that we get, we went to, everything was being charged in U.S. dollars. Yeah. Even when you go to the marketplace, when you go to the fish market, the local, we buy locally. Not even, let's even forget about stores or retail stores. You just do an everyday barter system. You use U.S. dollars. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, that's why I question, I question people when they say the dollar is gonna die because that's what everybody uses. Same thing going to Caribbean. Some places, some exactly. countries, that's what they use the uh, U.S. dollars. So. Mm-hmm. But, uh, exactly. We're well, perfect. And while I got you on here, let me. Uh, if anyone uh, is traveling to us, uh, Liberia, have any questions uh, for Wayne, uh, the uh, tour operator? Greetings, Wayne. Peace and blessings. Teresa here. Peace and blessings. Uh, nice to meet you, Miss Teresa. I will see you in Liberia. So you oh, say wow, they great. use uh, U.S. currency. What denomination? Fives, tens, twenties? What? She wanna know if, you, if we should bring, bring bill, big bills because I'm always telling everyone to bring big bills, but that's usually for exchange rates. But I think since you're going to Liberia and use all the all the currency, you can. I mean, all of the different um, amount of money, you can still bring $1 bills and things like that. You said how much, sorry, there was just calling me. I'm still here. With, you said how many, how, how can you change the money? Uh, she want to know so, the conversion rates. The, 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 the nominations, we have $1 oh, right, bill, right. $5 okay. bill, $10 bill, $20 bill, $50 bill, $100 bill, like that. So I'm saying which are all of them usable or you rather have yeah. large bills what yeah because in some countries people, some countries the, the like one and two dollars no one takes them but uh but basically uh what when is saying that uh they use every single last uh i, I don't know if they yeah. use the coins but they use one dollar and up basically right? thank you yeah. sister. thank you oh thank yeah you. They, they use everything so, I mean, okay. I won't lie. basically saying Bitcoin. it's just like america Okay, yeah, thank you. Not, not, yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, no All right, uh, go ahead, Yes, yes. The sister's bringing me back to memories because Liberia was my first country going to back in the day. And, she, and I remember the people from even back then, they were very nice. And I had a lot of friends from Liberia to went to my college because, you know, I graduated from HBCUs. So even back then, Liberians was coming to our school and we just had a great time. So I remember my time in Liberia, even though it was a while back, I really enjoyed myself. I was going on to Togo because I was in Peace Corps in Togo. But the time that I spent in Liberia was wonderful. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So which HBCU did you um did you uh attend? Because I know that Coppin State College for yeah, I'm years a grad- now. 
I'm from I'm from Savannah, so I graduated from Savannah State. It was a college when I was there. Now it's a university, and the second one, Alabama A and M University in Huntsville. So I graduated from from two. And I remember doing also during the war when they had the refugees, the librarians get sent to Ghana, and I had the opportunity to go there and be amongst them there when it was over twenty thousand. So I got a history of Liberia too. <laughs> Oh, you, you know, you know like Liberian people very well, then. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you. I say you know Liberian people very well. The connection is a problem. I repeat that one more time, Winnie. I was just saying that you know Liberian people very well. By yes. what you have mentioned, you know, uh, yeah. a lot of the HBCUs that have like even up to now, I think Cop even up to now, Coppin State College uh -huh. in Baltimore, Maryland. They still have like a special relationship with Hunter Hunter University mm -hmm. and Liberia. Mm -hmm. I remember when Dole was in office and they could sue him too. You remember when Dole was in office and what happened? You said something about President Dole. Yeah. yeah. When, uh, when they overthrew him and right. one of my in laws from Ghana lived there and, you know, she was getting away. When all that stuff happened, she, you know, she was doing really good. Liberia was the thing back there, but every most African countries, if not all, so there were a lot of Ghanaians and everybody there. So she really was running for her life, and she went through the river to get back to Ghana when all this stuff happened. That's perfect, perfect. Uh, well, that's uh, that's the connection uh, that um, unfortunate. Um, you know, but uh, we have enough uh, people from Liberia all over the place and trying to connect with them. Uh, Gail, uh, your line is open. Yes, I'm trying to ask a question. I see that you say the itinerary will change. Uh, the flight. Yeah, the flights, uh, uh, Royal Air Maroc changed their flight schedule. So uh, they, they they have us leaving from uh, Liberia like a day earlier. Okay, so what time would I need to be at JFK? What time and what day? Yeah, uh, I sent. It's, it's the same on the flight schedule I sent to you. What I sent to you was the changes. So it's uh, I'd have to look back on the uh, flight schedule itself. That's about That's about but all of us are gonna meet at JFK uh -huh. New York, uh, at the departure gate on uh, Royal Air Morocco. And let me. Well, yeah, I'm looking at the pad. Let me uh, let me open the uh, flights. Let me open the uh, newsletter so I can. All right, there we go. The lady that that traveled to Liberia. What year did you travel to Liberia? If I may ask, please. Uh, Akubi, when did you go to Liberia? All right, and let me uh, do a quick screen sharing real quick. And this is to answer our Gail question. So Gail, give me a few seconds. Uh, let me put up the schedule. And then all of these are a reflection of what's uh, on the uh, website. So here we go. All right, so uh, this is a uh, part of our itinerary. This is the newsletter that I have out and so uh, day one, Friday, March 29th. So it's still the same departing day. Uh, so a meet and greet at 7 p.m. at the Casablanca, Morocco departure gate at New York City uh, Airport. Uh, so our flight leave at 9 p.m. Uh, so we just, so everyone just needs to just get there uh, before seven and we just meet up from there. And then our flight is gonna go directly to uh, Casablanca. And then uh, we're gonna have a long layover. So we'll do a full day trip with lunch, dinner, sightseeing. And then we get back to the airport in the middle of the night. And then we make our way to uh, Liberia. And then coming back to compensate for the day that's uh, missing, uh, have us, uh, have us uh, for a full day in uh, Morocco where you're overnighting. And that is the uh, end of the schedule, which I'm uh, scrolling down to.
so that is the uh, new adjustments based on their uh, their schedule. So you have two days in Morocco and seven in uh, Liberia for the total of a uh, nine day tour. And that is the latest uh, newsletter for the uh, Liberia tour. It's more colorful and more updated. So Gail, let me know if that answers your question. I was uh, wondering about this returning flight. Is that Monday? All right, the returning yeah. flight. Okay, so let me get back to school, Sharon. All right, so the uh, returning flight. So once we leave, um, once we leave Monrovia on the seventh, uh, we get to Casablanca later on that day, and then uh, we'll be staying there that day, and then the uh, next day, and then your return flight will leave on the eighth, and you'll get to New York in the nighttime, and then the rest of us, um, some of us will overnight in New York, and then we'll just leave off our connection flight for the morning and the ninth. And then for those who don't have connection flights or have a simple connection flight, they can just get to where they need to get to on the 8th. But for the most part, majority of us outside of people from New York will have to finish their tour on the 9th. So that's um, April, March uh, 29th departure and then April 9th return. But April 8th return for yourself since you don't have a connection flight. And so that coincides with the itinerary that I sent to you for your visa. All right, so let me know if uh, that is uh, clear. And then also while I'm at this, uh, what I have on the itinerary, is if anyone want to stay longer in Liberia or Morocco, just let me know and then logistically we can work that out and change around flights and things like that. So just putting always putting that out ahead of time and that's for all countries also if anybody want to stay longer or go to another country. And I have no problem helping with those logistic movements. All right. Monday. Uh, yes, uh, Monday. So, uh, so the flight will leave at uh, at three fifty five, and it will get to New York at six forty five p.m. So by the time we get our luggage and get um, get out of uh, passport control, probably looking at roughly about eight o'clock. And so for the rest of us, are, it's going to be tight for the rest of us. Uh, so I'm going to work out arrangements for the rest of us this overnight or leave out in the morning. But you and all the people of, that's connected to New York, um, you can just proceed. And then for those who are going to Washington, Dallas, uh, your flight will just leave and go to Washington, Dallas. So do you have loop rates for hotel uh, can you repeat that one more time? Is there a certain where there are group breaks? I'm not hearing you. Those who need to get there. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get clarity of what you're saying. You said something about the hotel and about a, about a group break. Okay. If you're saying uh, mine is an eight. I won't be able to get another flight until Tuesday. And I was asking because it said some would be staying over. And depending on the size, sometimes you can get a group of rates with those who will be staying in the uh, hotel. Okay, so you you're not you're not in New York. Is that a flight? Yeah, so the thing I'm like, um, are you, are you, is New York your final destination or do you need to go somewhere else? Because for those, who, for those, uh, like I mentioned about the other people like ourselves, just go to Atlanta, we'll do a, we'll do a, a group book and just like the rest of the accommodations to make sure that 
everyone can overnight and leave in the morning. But so, uh, what airport do you need to get to? Um, Love Field and Dalek. All right. All right, so I don't know. Uh, no, Gail, uh, Gail, uh, Gail, Gail, no, Gail, okay. I apologize. Um, for some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you were someone else. Um, the person that's uh, leaving from uh, JFK, New York. Um, so in your case, just like uh, the other case of a few other people, uh, if I can't find a connection flight. Uh, enough to where you can leave uh, New York and get on that connection flight. What I'll do is I'll, I'll make accommodations for you and then literally leave out the next day. But it's still, you're still on the tour date and the tour schedule, which is the 8th and the 9th. So whatever we do is included. Okay, I'm not going to take up more time. I'll uh, email you because I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, but I'll, return but I'll, to Dallas. <laughs> So yeah, so as far as uh, as far as your direct information, I would have to just um, communicate back with you and let you know if we're going to be able to do that. Um, and I'm trying to find the timing of this when we're going to get out. Uh, so if we can get you on a flight like nine, ten o'clock, then then we just we just overnight you. But uh, everyone is going to get back either the eighth or the ninth. And then another option is um, I have another airport uh, which is Washington Dulles. So what I'll do is um, I'll uh, reach out to you and uh, you and I can uh, finalize those things and uh, finalize a sequence that work out for you for clarity. Because I, I may have to move some people around to, to leave from Casablanca to somewhere else versus New York. But the goal is to do my best to make sure everybody have connection flights because I know at this point people just want to go home. So those things are still have to work out because uh, the, the the change is literally as of like, I'm trying to see when I spoke to you, Wayne. I want to say the change was literally after the last seven days. So I had uh -huh. to. But uh, yes, uh, so I got you. I got you, Gail. And uh, I'll put, uh, I'll add you down for Dallas, D-A-L. And then if I do D-A-L, we can get you the D-A-L. Sorry, So we get you if we can get you to DAL, we'll get you to I'll email. But um but nevertheless, uh, let me mute you and then um I'll definitely call you and then we'll just uh, go through it. Um um since your line is not uh your line is a copy. Okay. All right, perfect. So what I was uh, talking with uh Gail was uh we're trying to make sure that uh we have this a nice sequence for everyone. Um that way you don't have to overnight. So the schedule you see, it's just basically saying that for those who are get to New York, you, you'll you be good. And then everyone else, we try to work out the best connection flight for you. And if we have to overnight, we just get you in a hotel and get you out there in the morning. Other than that, our other option is to get you connected to the flight that they have going to Washington, Dallas. So all of those are logistics stuff that um, I'm going to be working out um, and uh, that's the nature of the work that the flight schedule change do for you. But at the same time, too, it put us in a nice uh, flight sequence where we can enjoy another part of uh, North Africa and you know, and things like that. And then once we uh, do another Liberia uh, uh, Liberia presentation, uh, me and Wayne will just go through the full schedule and then we'll go through some more of these things with everyone. And it's the same thing for the other countries also. That way we can spend more time and talking specifically about the uh, itinerary and um, all the accommodations and the flights. So family, uh, the line is open. Uh, just want to see if anyone else have any questions before we work out on closing for the night. And then if anyone needs to call me or reach out to me, you can just you know, reach out and uh, give me a call. And we can also go over things uh, throughout the week. Uh, we have a person here, Ken. Uh, Ken, uh, let me know if you want to unmute yourself and say hello. Or... And uh, also, uh, Dion, uh, you're up. 
let me know if you have anything you want to share or or if you if you took a look at the uh the new flow of the itinerary for um, Liberia um I didn't look at it but I will once we get off the call I don't have anything to share just uh happy to go to uh Liberia on the trip with you bro well, hopefully, hopefully you're looking forward to the additional country we added. Um, it's a nice, um, uh, nice schedule on there as far as our uh, tour sites in Morocco. Okay, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Anywhere, anywhere in Africa is good with me. You know how I feel. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, trying to discover more country, but I've never been to you know Morocco either. So, looking forward to it. Uh, that will be country number eleven and twelve. Uh, so I was excited about that. Uh, that's how we got this far by this uh, opening up to our experiences. Hey, and tell Teresa I grew up in Rosegate. So we'll chop it up when we get the Liberian. I hear that, Teresa. <laughs> so perfect. Uh, so family, appreciate the energy. Once again, I'm on standby if anyone needs to talk with me. Uh, yeah, Teresa, um, uh, Diana. Greetings. Me from Harlem. <laughs> me not from Delaware. Me live in Delaware. Peace and blessings. We see you in Liberia. Uh, All right. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, enjoy yes. Kwanzaa. Happy New Year as well. Yes, and Peace enjoy, and enjoy all those things since it's my last conference call until maybe a month from now. Um, enjoy and all the things that we're working on, we'll be working on because uh, that's what it takes to get all the stuff done ahead of time. So I'm always working on one or two of the journeys, the one we're going on and then the ones we have in the future. Uh, so family, I'll be on standby. I appreciate everyone joining us on another uh, Africa for the Africans uh, Tours Conference call, and I'll keep everybody posted. And I uh, remember that I uh, got everyone in the uh, WhatsApp page. So if you're traveling with us and you're not on the WhatsApp page, uh, let me know so we can add you to the page or send you the link. And then from there, we just keep in touch and keep up with everything. So everyone, uh, good night, and the journey continues. Uh, see you on your, uh, you okay, good night. Sure. I thought you wanted to share some uh, uh, good news or some good blessings or give some no. <laughs> not really just looking forward to Ghana next year and right, have some more fun all right so family we'll keep on working on things and um uh, the journey continues and everyone have a great night you too thank you all right night <laughs>